Hey, good morning, everybody. And we are back. I think we had an issue earlier um, with the first video I posted. So hopefully this one works properly. I'm just going to just going to make sure that we get this shared again on the Facebook groups. So welcome everybody who's watching this video. For those that are attending live, thank you for attending live. We're having this session every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. We may change the schedule in the future, but for now, we're just having it every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock Q&A session where I have a topic that we're going to talk about. And you can ask any kind of questions you want with regards to freelancing, with regards to working from home, and with regards to the topic. Okay, so we do have a couple of people now. Um, I hope that this one works properly. Okay, it looks like it's working properly. And we are good to go. So yeah, feel free to ask any questions at any time during this presentation. This is more of a Q&A rather than a presentation. So Um, is freelancing right for me? And let's see if we can, oh, there we go. My face gets covered by the question. So that is the question right now. Okay, there we go. It's working. Um, free course for newbies. So I'm just going to, good morning. Good morning, Andrea. Thank you, Enzo, for confirming that it is working. And if you are a newbie, you don't know anything about freelancing yet, we do have that free course over at freevacourse.com. I know some of you guys watching may be new to this. So head over there, get our five-day free course so that you can get started with your freelance career. Okay, so um, the question today is, is freelancing right for me? Is freelancing right for me? Uh, First of all, let's take a look at the different pros and cons of freelancing. So when it comes to freelancing, we have a couple of pros. Our, our, our first pro here is that there, there's no commute. Um, we just saw this, Anna just shared a, a topic this morning in, in the Facebook group, that there is no commute. You, know, you don't have to spend hours um, on you know, the MRT or on EDSA or in, in in, the, in Cebu, you know, I think on Escario or in La Hogue, where you spend hours just getting to work. Um, so there's no commute. You just wake up in the morning. So as you can see, um, well, that's that's the the bed right there. That's that's my bed, um, and this is where I can work from. So I just get up. Um, and within a couple of seconds, I can get to work. I don't even have to fix my hair. I don't even have to wash my face. I usually don't do that, but there's no commute. The commute is from my, my bed to this chair over here. So there is no commute. That's a huge advantage, especially right now with the traffic getting worse and worse. It doesn't seem to be getting any better in the Philippines. Um, so that's one big pro right there. Secondly, one of the good things about freelancing is that you have more time, right? Because there's no commute um, and because of a lot of different other factors, you know, there's, we can take our lunch breaks while we're working. We can, you know, have snacks while we're, we're working at the same time. We just work on the computer. We work from home. So we have more time to do what we want to do. We have more time to spend with our family. We have more time to watch TV if that's what you want to do. Um, and in my case, we have more time to travel and travel around the world um, because we're able to work from anywhere. And that's another benefit, being just able to work from anywhere. You can be, you know, some. The, I, I remember when I was visiting my friend, um, I was supposed to be working for a client, but I was visiting my friend. We were just hanging out. Um, and he was having a party and, and and a client called me up because I was supposed to be working at the time. So I have my my U.S. number linked to my cell phone. So it rang and I had to go into his bathroom and take the call and said, OK. Um, and the client asked me to do to, to do some work on the website. So I said, OK, I'll do it right now. So I brought my laptop with me. I just, you know, in my friend's house, even though there was a party, I just spent like 15 minutes 
updating the website and that was it. I was still I was still paid for that time, even though I was a, at a friend's party. So I, I could still work there. Um, right now I'm in Thailand. I'm in Chiang Mai. I can work from here. Um, if you're in the Philippines, you know you get tired. Sometimes you get tired of the environment working at home. It's the same the same background, the same environment. So you want to change. You can always go to a coffee shop or or wherever. As long as it has Next pro uh, working from home is that you have more control over the kind of work that you do. Um, with just, you know, freelancing is very similar to, to a business. In fact, you can consider yourself as a small business owner if you're a freelancer because you're responsible for yourself. And with that comes more control over the kind of work that you do. For example, when you're working in an office, you know, some, we apply for jobs. I remember when I applied to the call center and I was assigned to a specific account. Um, one of my first accounts was an outbound sales team. So we'd call companies and we'd have to sell them telephone lines. And I hated it. I hated doing that, but I was stuck, right? If I could quit my job and look for another one, that was my only option. Um, whereas with freelancing, with freelancing, you have more control. You can choose what kind of jobs you want to apply to. You can choose what kind of jobs you want to accept. For example, uh, a few months ago, I was doing SEO. I was doing search engine optimization. I was doing... And then I just... I wanted to do something else. I got bored of it. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to go into Facebook ads. I wanted to go into online courses um, and help clients with that. So I just shifted. I shifted my focus. And I have control over the kind of work that I do. If somebody asks me, tells me, hey, can you do this for me? Can you start working on my Instagram? I can just say, no, I don't want to. And, and, and I have full control over the kind of work that I do. Next is there is there can be more money. It's not 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 a um, hundred percent certain. It depends, but for most people, for most freelancers, they earn more money freelancing than they did when they were working in an office. There are a lot of reasons for this, but one of the major reasons is because we're working directly for U.S. companies most of the time. We're working for U.K. companies, Australian companies, sometimes Europe. And since we work directly for them, we get paid in you know, Philippine pesos. I mean, we still get our money in Philippine pesos, but the client is paying us in U.S. dollars. And this is a very big benefit because, as we know, the costs of living are getting more and more expensive. You know, um, I remember 10 years ago, I was earning something like, 10,000 a uh, 12,000 pesos a month including allowances and that was I was so excited for 12,000 pesos a month but nowadays 12,000 12,000 10 years ago is not the same as 12,000 pesos now you can't buy the same things things are getting more and more expensive and salaries aren't increasing as high so the the need for more money nowadays the need for more money is continually increasing um um, I saw a comment that there was a stop. I'm just going to continue. I think you should get it back. It might have been a technical glitch. Okay. The need for more money. Okay. It's still going. Just try refreshing. Um, try refreshing. Well, you can't hear me if you can't see the video. Anyway, the need for more money is getting more and more important um, as, we're, as things are getting more and more expensive um, as time goes on. Okay, let me just check the comments here, see if you have any questions. Um, good morning. Um, good morning, Fritzy, Karen, Arlene, uh, Baby, Jamaica. We have Melanie. Good morning. Good morning, all you guys.
Okay, my connection went down momentarily. But it seems we're okay. Um, okay, the connection got, my connection got disconnected and, and came back on, but it seems that we're okay. So, um, Jalusel, if you're asking Banopo, if you're asking how, there I have that free course. Just go to freevacourse.com. Um, as you can see it there, there is, yeah, there is bad weather right now in Cagayan. Let's, um, if, if, if you can say a prayer for our countrymen who are experiencing bad weather, um, we hope that everybody's okay in that part of the country. Okay. So we talked about uh, the pros of freelancing. There's no commute. There's, we have more time, you have more control, um, and there can potentially more money for most people who are freelancing. How about the cons? What are the the bad sides of freelancing? Okay, so it's not always good. There's always some bad with it compared to working in an office. So first of all, you don't have a social life when you're freelancing. Not, well, not necessarily, but there's less opportunity for you to practice a social life when you're freelancing. Um, you know, in the office, we used what we used to do in, in especially in the call center, like after work, after shift, we'd go out, we'd hang out, um, and a lot of people would, you know, drink a few beers and just hang out after shift. Especially like on on the weekends, if you're if you're if you don't have work the next night, not the next day, because we work at night. You know, they just go to bars, start going karaoke, and start singing. And there's that social life. You know, during breaks, um, you hang out with people. You have you also have lunch um, with a lot of your office mates, and you know when you're getting water, when you're, you're you have talks, there's chismis and and all of that. There's unfortunately if, if that's not present really in um, in freelancing. For some people, that's a good thing. For a lot of people, it's a bad thing because you might miss working around other people. Um, you know, maybe you have your kids with you, um, you have your cat or your dog with you. Um, for me, I have my my girlfriend with me. We we do work together, so we do have that social life. Um, you can work in so in co working space, but it's a, it's different. So th- there's much less of a social life when you're working from home. Next are there are no benefits really, um, like no what I'm when I say benefits, I mean medical benefits and like social sec- well SSS and um, fail health. There's no SSF, there's no field health, there's, there's no health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance. Doesn't mean it's not available for you because you can still avail of these benefits. In fact, that we're talking to a partner right now, a potential partner who is planning to offer these benefits to freelancers. Um, but you're going to have to look, pay your own taxes. You have to sign up for your own health insurance, life insurance, and so on. Uh, there's somebody saying that it's cutting in and out. I'm not sure if it's if it's your connection, but Anna, you're the only one complaining that so far that it's cutting in and out. So hopefully it's not everyone's not experiencing it. It might be your connection. All right. Um, okay, um, we have a couple of people who are having some issues. Um. Well. Okay, baby's having baby's not having an issue, so that's that's good to hear. <laughs> so it's not just it might just be your connection. Um, all right, so I'll move on with the presentation. It seems that we're everything's going smoothly. I hope for most of you guys. Okay, so next the cons of freelancing is. Control over you know your time over the kind of work that you do um, when it comes to freelancing. Okay, um, so you do have more control over the time. Uh, you do have more control over the kind of work that you do. You have control over what kind of jobs and what kind of um, what kind of work that you accept. You can just say no to things. That's both a pro and a con. Um, for because for some people, for some people, they they don't work well if they have their own control. Some people like going into an office, like being told what to do. Um, you know, they like getting orders from a boss. 
every single day because it's simple. And that's very simple. It's a simple life. Go into the office, start work, be, have the boss tell you what to do. You end work and then that's it. With freelancing, it's a bit different because you're, you're essentially, you're your own boss. You tell yourself what to do. Um, you're going to have to tell yourself, okay, now I have to study this. I have to attend this training. I have to enroll in this training. I have to um, search for these jobs. I have to do my own things. Uh, and for some people, it, it's not good for them because they don't like that. They don't like having that control. They just like going into an office, being told what to do and to just go home and that's it. Same thing, more time. Um, one of the cons of freelancing is that you have more time. It's both a benefit and a, I don't know what the opposite of benefit is. I can't think of it, but it's both good and bad that you have more time because you have more time to spend with your family. But for some people, for some people, because they have so much time, because they have that freedom of time, they end up not doing the work they're supposed to do. In an office, you don't have a choice. You work eight, nine hours a day, sometimes 10 hours a day, um, and you're stuck in the office. You don't have a choice but to do the work. But when you're working from home, um, you do have that choice. You do have the choice to not work right now. If you don't feel like working, you have the choice of not working in the morning. You can work in the afternoon. But for some people, they say, oh, I don't feel like it right now in the morning. Oh, in the afternoon, I don't feel like it. Oh, at night, I don't feel like it. And they never get any work done. Believe me, I've experienced that myself where I was so lazy, just didn't do any work. Um, and of course, my income got affected. Okay, um, going and seeing if we have any questions here. Okay, um, Herman German, um, ask Kolang, what are the things that you need to consider before leaving your regular job um, for freelancing? So let me just take this off, okay. And we have this question here. Ask along what are the things that need to be considered before re leaving your regular job to freelancing? Okay, very good question. And, and if you're working in an office right now, if you're working in corporate um, call center or if you're an OFW or anything um, and you want to go freelancing, you want to start working from home, there are a number of things that you need to consider. Um, because like I said, because you have more time, because you have more control, it's a, it's different. It's something that's very new if you're not used to it yet. And because it's something new, um, you might have difficulty transitioning. You might have difficulty getting used to how things are. Um, my advice, number one, my advice is, well, of course, you have to have a computer. Very important. You have to have an internet connection that works properly. Very important as well. Um, but aside from that, aside from that, you should also have some savings as much as possible. At I'd say at least three months worth of expenses. If you spend, let's say 10,000 pesos a month, you need to have 30,000 pesos in the bank first before you leave your job and go freelancing unless the the other side to that unless of course you have um, a husband or a wife month then my suggestion is to have at least three months worth of of living expenses um, before you go into freelancing. Second is your mindset. Okay, you have to be ready to take control over to be responsible for yourself. You won't have a boss anymore. You're going to be your own boss. So that mindset is also very important. Okay, I was. I hope I was able to answer that question. Um, and uh, me, me, Nick. Yes, that's true. If you're already earning, then you can also have those benefits. So when I was saying about the benefits, uh, if you're earning, then you can pay for the benefits. You can pay for the health insurance, the life insurance, the um, SSS, and PhilHealth on your own. May has a question: How to win hourly job? Po, yung walang job success, rising talent at hourly job na na experience kasi fixed price lang na experience ko. Hmm, that's a that's an interesting question. So you and this is for those that don't understand what's going on here. This is in regards to Upwork. Um, May says she was Upwork is one of the main places that you can get freelance jobs, and May has been getting. Um, 
what we call project-based work or fixed price work. And she's bidding for hourly work. And may it's, it's basically the same thing. The way that you were able to win um, fixed price contracts is the way that you can win hourly contracts. You still have to, you know, write your, you have to have your job title that's specific to the job you're applying to. You have to have your cover letters that are specific to the job descriptions that you're applying to. Um, and you have to do good in the interviews. Same way that you win jobs. It doesn't matter if it's an hourly or a fixed fixed rate job. Maybe it's the kind of jobs that you're applying to. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, you're a student of our of our boot camp. So um, you can feel free to shoot us an email uh, as well if you have additional concerns regarding this. Okay, so um, once again, feel free to ask any questions that you do have. Um, hopefully you're watching this live so I can answer it live. If you're watching the replay, you can still answer, you can still ask your questions. Okay, so um, on to our next, I'm just going to copy and paste this here, our next concern here. What kind of person uh, do you need to be in order to successfully, oh, that's not yet, not yet this one, not yet this one, sorry. What skills do you need in order to freelance? Okay, and this is this is very similar to um, this question here by by C. Katulad ko na not really good in computer, even idea about VA or SEO. Pwede ba ako mahasa pa sa ganitong rangalan? Um, I, what that word is para maka work at at home as a VA sir. Um, so good question. If you're not, and and that connects to our current um, current topic right now, which is. This is our current topic. Um, what kind of skills do you need um, when you're to be a successful freelancer? So, like, um, see, is that your a first name? I'm not sure. You're saying that you're not very good in computers, right? So, you want to learn about VA or SEO or things like that. So, when you're starting when, to become a successful freelancer, you have to have, I'd say, um, you should be okay with computers. You don't need to be very good. You don't need to be able to do programming. You don't need to be an expert, but you should be okay with computers. What I mean by that is, can you surf the internet? Can you do Google searches? Can you man? Can you check and receive? Can you send and receive? you can surf the internet as long as you can create uh, Microsoft or Google documents, then you should be okay um, with working online. You don't need to be an expert in computers, just browsing the internet, checking, sending email, and creating documents, that's okay. Uh, my suggestion is if you're not very good with computers, don't do SEO. SEO is technical, um, requires expertise with computers, requires understanding of computers. I'd say start with VA, virtual assistant and admin work, um, because that's an easy place to start. Um, you can start, you know, doing data transcription. You can start um, doing data entry, and those are good places to start. And um, there's, we do have our free course here, freevacourse.com, and that a tutorial and that's an introduction to working online as a virtual assistant okay uh jules is saying good morning everyone looking forward to learning more things about freelancing okay so you're here um mj kailangan sir kailangan ba ng more trainings and experiences para matanggap sa trabaho um the fat the quick answer to that is no you don't necessarily need any trainings or experiences as long as you're able to do the work and convince the companies the clients that you can do the work you don't really need trainings you don't really need experience to get started okay of course if you're applying for more um, more difficult work you do need trainings you do need experience but to start off you don't necessarily need them i know that i offer a training course right um so why am I saying this? Because, well, the training course gives gives my students experience. It gives them um, 
that training and experience that they need so that they can tell clients, I know how to do this. It teaches them the basic skills. But a lot of people um, don't need it, especially if they already have the skills, if they know how to uh, manage emails, if they know how to do transcription, if they know how to do data entry and admin work, they don't need to go through trainings and they can get started. Or if they know how to do customer service work, they don't need trainings. Um, they can get started immediately. So not necessarily, but it is recommended to increase your chances of, a, of success. Uh, Enzo is asking, how long does it take your proposal in Upwork before withdrawing it? I'd say most clients respond within a week. When you send a proposal, when you tell a client, I want, when you're applying for a job basically within a week some take longer um, some take shorter but i'd say one week is a good amount of time uh mike how can i be successful as a freelance web developer but do i need to focus more on the back end or front end or back end <laughs> good question it's a bit technical a little bit of a technical question so i don't I won't expect everyone to understand um, what we're talking about here, but when it comes to web development, on you, Mike, uh, a designer, or are you more of a developer? If you're more of a designer, focus on front end because front end requires design skill. It requires you to be good with CSS, HTML, to know colors and fonts, um, and a little bit of JavaScript. If you're more of a developer, if you know PHP, if you can do um, Ruby on Rails, PHP, or uh, Python, then focus more on the back end. That's more of the programming side. Um, so depends on what your, where your skill and where your interest is. Uh, I'm from India, mas mababa rate nila, pero ayoko pa po magbaba ng rate ng tulad um, nila kasi ang skills and most important is the client case mababang rate tama po ba yes i highly me with that you uh, in for upwork yet so even when i was very new um the minimum rate was one dollar and i'd be bidding my rate at the time let's say it was ten dollars at the time i was bidding ten dollars and they were bidding one dollar but I'd still be able to win the jobs. Why? Because I'm able to prove to clients that I can do the work. I'm able to tell them he's bidding one dollar. I can do ten. I'm bidding ten dollars. But I know how to do this. I know what you're talking about. I have the skills. I have. I um, can show you that I can do this work. Skills are more important. I don't want you guys to be underbidding just because um, Indians are bidding less. And because there will always be somebody who can, who will do the work for for less than you, there's always going to be somebody. If you say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay I'm gonna bid five dollars. I'm gonna do this for five dollars an hour," somebody will always say, "I'll do it for four. If you say four, I'll, someone's gonna say, "I'll do it for three. So don't don't start that. Don't fight on price. Fight on quality. Fight on the skills that you can do. Um, if you don't have the skills yet, if you don't have the quality, then attend trainings, improve your quality, but never fight on price. Good morning. Uh, Sophia is saying good morning. Um, and Jen, can I have a data entry job if I only have an average typing skill? Yes, you can. Um, and this is similar to Baby's question earlier. Yes, you can if you have average skill, but my advice is improve your typing skills. Get better so that you can charge higher, so that you can get those jobs. If you're, if your speed, if your typing speed, and you can go to typingtest.com to find out your typing speed. If your typing speed is forty words per minute, then practice. Keep on practicing. Increase that speed so that to sixty. Increase it to eighty to ninety, so that you can have you can be better at data entry jobs. You can apply for jobs saying, I can type faster. I can type faster than these other people. Um, and you can eventually, you can even charge higher rates. Because if two people are applying for the job, one person types at 40 words per minute. Um, the other person types more than twice as fast. So the other person can charge more than twice. So improve your skills. If you're only average, improve to be above average. Keep on practicing.
Okay, and that's what I said about freelancing is that you're responsible for yourself. If you don't improve yourself, if you don't improve your skills, you won't be able to succeed. Okay, very important. Okay, so if you, once again, please continue to ask questions. Um, I'm my presentation, so you may want to ask your questions. I'm just going to protect this question, this um, topic here. What kind of person do you need to be in order to successfully freelance? So you need to be somebody who's hardworking. Okay, that's very important. Um, like I said, you are responsible for yourself. So if you want to succeed, you have to be hardworking. You can't be lazy. If you're lazy, then you might as well work in the office because you're not going to succeed in freelancing. You have to be able to be determined. You have to know what you're, why you're freelancing. Okay, because there are times you're going to fail. When you're freelancing, you are going to fail. You're going to fail over and over and over again. Okay, um, But then after failing multiple times, that's when you succeed. And once you find out how you can succeed and you focus on that, you focus on what made you succeed, then that's how you can continue to be successful. You can become better, more, more and more successful. But when you're starting out during the first few weeks, during the first few months when you're freelancing, you are going to fail. So you have to have oh, okay my my connection got lost there i was just saying um i was just saying you have to have um you have to keep pushing you have to keep fighting in order to succeed even no matter how many times you fail you have to say okay i know i'm doing this and i am going to succeed okay next is you have to be flexible if you want to be a successful freelancer, you have to be able to adjust, um, especially when you're failing. When you're failing the first few times, you have to be able to, to look at to take a look at what you're doing and say, OK, I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to adjust. I'm going to be flexible to what the jobs to the kind of jobs I'm applying to. I won't stay the same. I'm going to become better. I'm going to improve myself. If you don't improve yourself, then you actually won't succeed in freelancing. Um, and lastly, you should also, um, you should be the kind of person that wants to learn new things. If you just want to do the same thing every day for 10 years of your life, not learn anything new, then you might as well stay in the office, might as well work in corporate. Um, but if you want to learn new things, if you want to know more about psychology, no more about marketing, no more about development, design, and things like that, then freelancing is a very good place to go. Okay. Um, and my last discussion point today is who are those who should not freelance? Okay. Um, who are those that should not freelance? Those who should not freelance are those that want something easy. Um, some people tell me, well, I see it all the time in the Facebook page and they say, okay, I, I'm looking for something very easy. I just want data entry work, copy paste work long. Um, I just want easy work that will pay me lots of money. That's what they, that's what they want, but that's not available in freelancing. Yes, you can make lots of money. I keep on saying that you can make lots of money, but it's not going to be easy, uh, but it's going to be worth it. Right? So if you want something easy, work in an office, work in Jollibee, work in McDonald's. That's the easiest kind of work that you can do. But if you are willing to be challenged, if you're willing to fight, to, to improve yourself, then that's how you can seed with freelancing. Second, those who should not really be freelancing are those who very, 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 you know, who live and um, are very involved with like office social life, office politics, office chismis, um, you know, you know, working with the boss, um, close the boss to get promoted and things like that. So if you're that kind of person who loves the office chismis, who loves the office politics, then you shouldn't be freelancing because there's that doesn't exist in freelancing. It, or 
it exists very little in freelancing. So um, freelancing might not be the right place for you if that's if that's what you enjoy. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm just saying that you might be better served in an office where there is office social life and politics and chismis, which doesn't exist in freelancing. Okay, so I am actually done with the presentation right now, um, and I will still stay on to answer your questions. So um, we have a couple of questions here. How can I pre? How can I improve on selling myself? I can't seem to put the right words. Um, that is a whole different topic, <laughs> Sophia. But you, you should be studying sales skills, the, the psychology of sales. Um, and once you once you study that, apply it in your application. Apply it in your cover letters. Apply it in your job title. In your profile overview. Apply the sales skills that you learn. Um, but study sales skills. We do have some a couple. Sales skills. There's selling skills you have to study. Uh, there are books. There are websites available that you can um, study this. Um, Arlene, I'm 45 now, but very newbie in this field, willing to learn the man. Does someone like me have a greater chance of getting hired? Well. To answer that question, I'm going to say that um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of experience you have. As if it's not related, then you have an equal chance. You you have an equal chance as somebody um, who is 65 years old and is a newbie. You have an equal chance as somebody who is 20 years old and is a newbie. Age doesn't matter. Um, your skills matter. So if you're if you're if you all have the same skills, a 20 year old, a 40 year old, and a 65 year old, age doesn't matter. You all have the same chance of getting hired. It's up to your skills. It's up to your ability to sell yourself. It's up to your ability to be able to do the work. Um, so you, you have the same chance of getting hired as everybody else. So how do you make yourself more hireable? Improve your skills, get experience, improve your sales skills as well. Um, Ray, newbie here, where do I start? Kahit data entry lang. Okay, so Ray, um, please check out the free course that I have here, freevacourse.com. That will tell you how you get started um, and give you some tips as well. Anna, um, oh naman, ako, ako din nasa 40s na. So Anna is in her 40s as well. She just started freelancing, uh, was it three months ago, four months ago? Um, and she is very successful now. She's one of our students, so we're very proud that she's successful, and she's one of our success stories. Um, but yeah, she's in her 40s. It started a few months ago. It's very successful now. Jules, this is my first time to freelance. How much should I charge for building a website? I'm just a newbie web development, but have 15, 15 years experience in IT. Thank you. Um, websites there are easy websites and there are difficult websites jules my advice for you right now is charge by the hour don't charge by the project yet if you have don't have any idea um how many hours it's going to take but but if you do have an idea how many hours it's going to take then um let's say you estimate let's say your hourly rate is is five dollars or let's say ten dollars an hour okay you're charging ten dollars an hour and you estimate that this project will take you 50 hours um, then you can charge $500 for the website. So um, my advice, if you're still new, if you don't know how long it's going to take, then charge by the hour. But if you do have an idea, then you can charge a flat rate. Um, just multiply your hours by the number of hours it's going to take. Um, Jane, are there training online for those who would like to be a software developer? Yes, there are trainings online. Unfortunately, I don't offer software development trainings, um, but there are there are a lot of trainings online um, for those that want to be to go into software development. My advice, Jane, is to start. Um, there's a, there's a website that has that. Uh, I can't remember it right now, but. Uh, you can start on codeacademy.com. That's right. That's the site, codeacademy.com. They do have some trainings there. I think it starts free. They start with some free trainings, and you might, uh, for the more advanced trainings, you may need to pay, but codeacademy.com is a good place to start. Celeste, 
Hi sir, hi sir. Good morning. I'm about to try freelancing. Work at home na po, pero natakot ako. Siguro I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Any advice po? Um, so Celeste, if you haven't taken the free course already, um, then I highly suggest that you do if you haven't taken it yet. But if you already have, you're still scared. I'd say that just do it. You know, or if you if you're connection yeah life is i was saying i just noticed some things up with my connection um but i was saying life is short take those challenges you know it's a challenge to start freelancing you wanting to do it means that you're you're one of those people that is probably going to succeed in freelancing so it's going to be a challenge it is scary it's very very scary i know it's very scary um but go ahead and do it you're going to fail at first. Be ready for failure, but just keep pushing. Just keep fighting. Just keep praying. Um, just keep adjusting, and you can succeed. Of course, we have the courses to help you out, but you don't. Uh, that's your option. Um, baby is saying forty plus. She started transcriptionist. That's based on research. Arangayon me konting na alam sa web design. So yeah, age doesn't matter. Like what I said. Anna has been working five months now. Ooh, that was fast. Five months na pala. Willing to do this. Can I earn from this in a few days from now? Um, and some people can. Some people can. But most people can't do it in a few days from now. Because you have to learn. Learning is a process. It will take time. It can take days for some people. It can take weeks for some people. It can take months for some people. For most people, it takes at least one month. Okay, to learn, to learn this whole freelancing thing. So if you're new to this, um, expect to work hard, expect to learn a lot, expect that you're going to have to study a lot. If you're not ready for that, then don't start. Um, a few days from now, um, you can if you really study hard and work hard and, and study the entire and work the entire day, then you can earn from this a few days from now. Nor is saying Code Academy is perfect. Yes, they have very good um, tutorials there. Most of my jobs were in the food industry. Do I stand a chance in freelancing? I'm going to answer this with the same answer I gave to Arlene earlier. It doesn't matter what your previous work was. It doesn't matter how old you are. You have the same chance as everybody who is starting. I started six years ago. I had no experience in freelancing. Um, and I succeeded. So many people, well, everybody starts from scratch. Everybody starts from zero. Um, we have people who were, I, I even know people who used to be domestic workers, OFW domestic workers, maids, um, and they are successful. People who used to work in the food industry, like Jollibee, Greenwich, they're successful. BPO, it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is if you're able to do the job and able to tell clients that you can do the job. Um, Joey, I want to have a real estate agent. Um, I'm not sure you're in the right place. We, we're not talking about real estate here. We're talking about freelancing. Um, ooh, uh, no audio for Arlene. Um, I think other people have audio. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Maria, I want to start freelancing. As well, if I'm willing to study, again, what will you recommend for me to take as a course to help my knowledge and skills as a freelancer? Maria, well, I have a free course here. This is my free course that I do have available. Um, it's a free course that you can take. I do have a paid course as well. This is a five-day free course. Let me just keep that on the screen. Freebaycourse.com. Boom, there we go. Um, this is a five-day free course, and we do have a more advanced paid course. So this is what I'd recommend. We've had so many success stories from our students. Um, I'm very proud to say that this course is very successful in getting people, giving the people the experience and the training they need in order to succeed. 